Hey guys, we are going to solve this rational inequality. As we solve this, I'm going to give you some pretty specific steps to follow, which is nice, right? But as you're doing it, you might be like, okay, hey, I can do this, but I don't really get why it gives me the answer. Stick around to the end because I'm going to show you exactly why the steps we took worked. And it's probably more simple than you think. All right, so when I'm solving these, first thing I want is everything on one side and zero on the other side. Guess what? We're good. Next thing I'm going to do is factor. If you need a factoring review, I will link a video for you in the corner, but I'm just going to factor this for you. You're welcome. It's going to factor to x times x minus 2 times x plus 1 on top. And on bottom, it's going to factor to x plus 2 times x minus 4 and we are still greater than or equal to zero. All right, from here, I am going to set each of these equal to zero. So I'm gonna have five things I'm setting equal to zero. Okay, now I'm gonna solve each of these for x. This one's already solved for x, it's just x equals zero. This one I would add two to both sides to get x equals two. Subtract 1 from both sides, get x equals negative 1. Subtract 2 from each side, get x equals negative 2. And add 4 to both sides, get x equals 4. All right, next I'm going to draw a number line. Everyone's favorite thing is a number line. And I want to represent each of these numbers on my number line. So my spacing doesn't have to be perfect, but we're going to be approximately 0 two, four, negative one, and negative two. Okay, I wanna represent each of these and I need to know if I want, if I have an open or a closed circle. Right off, I know that negative two and four are both going to be open circles. Why do I know that, you ask? Because if I were to plug in negative two, for x, it would make my denominator 0, which is ginormous no-no in math. We don't do zeros in denominators. Same thing for 4. If I were to plug in 4 for x, we would get a 0 in the denominator. So those get open circles. For the other one, 0, 2, and negative 1, to see if we need an open or closed circle for those, I go ahead and look at my inequality. And because it is equal to, greater than, or equal to, those are going to be closed circles. So 0, 2, and negative 1 are going to be closed circles. If that equal to weren't there, if it were just greater than, those would also be open circles. All right, from here, we are going to do something that we affectionately call sign analysis. You may have done this before, maybe not. But the gist is I'm going to figure out for each of these regions to the left of negative 2 between all of these and to the right of 4, when I plug in a number in that region for x, is my output positive or negative? The cool thing about sign analysis is I don't really care what the number answer is. I just care if it's positive or negative. So let's pick a number to the left of or less than negative 2. Let's just pick negative 10. So if I plug in negative 10, remember I'm not too concerned about what the number answer is, just if it's positive or negative. So if I were to plug it in for x, that would be negative, because it's a negative 10. Negative 10 minus 2 would also give me a negative. Negative 10 plus 1 would also give me a negative. That's my numerator on top. Negative 10 plus 2 would give me a negative, and negative 10 minus 4 would also give me a negative. All right, then on top I'd have a negative times a negative, which is positive, a positive times a negative, which is negative, over a negative times a negative, which is positive, negative divided by a positive, which is negative. There you go. All right, if you didn't like that, you're like, I'd rather just plug in the number and get a number answer, go for it. All right, then we need to pick a number between negative 2 and negative 1. Let's pick negative 
Okay, if at this point you're like, I don't get why she's doing this, I'm gonna switch videos. Remember, I'm gonna show you at the end why we did it. All right, if I plug in negative 1.5 for x, I'm gonna get a negative there. Negative 1.5 minus two would be negative. Negative 1.5 plus one would also be negative. Over, negative 1.5 plus two would be, we're switching it up, positive. Negative 1.5 minus four would be negative. All right, negative times a negative is positive. Positive times a negative is negative. Over, positive times a negative is negative. And a negative divided by a negative is, oh my gosh, it's positive. Look at that. Did you expect that? Maybe you did. All right, between negative 1 and 0 now, let's pick negative 0 0.5. When I plug that guy in <clears throat> for x, I get a negative there. Negative 0.5 minus 2 would also be a negative. Negative 0.5 plus 1 would be a positive over negative 0.5 plus 2 would be positive negative 0.5 minus 4 would be negative negative times a negative is positive positive times a positive is positive positive times a negative is negative hoo, hoo, hoo. positive divided by negative is negative all right that region is negative all right between 0 and 2 let's pick 1 so when I plug in 1 for x, I get a positive for that one. 1 minus 2 would give me a negative. 1 plus 1 would give me a positive. Over, 1 plus 2 would give me positive. 1 minus 4 would give me negative. All right, positive times a negative would give me a negative. Negative times a positive would give me a negative. Over, positive times a negative is negative. Negative divided by a negative is positive. Oh my gosh. Guys, two more. We got to do this region and greater than four. All right, next we're going to pick a number between two and four. Let's pick three. When I plug in three for x, I get positive. Three minus two is positive. Three plus one is positive. Three plus two is positive. Three minus four is negative. Positive times a positive times a positive is positive. Positive times a negative is negative. Positive divided by a negative is negative. <laughs> okay, that region is negative. Last one, I need a number bigger than four. Heck, you could pick 500 if you wanted to. I'm gonna pick 10. So if I plug in 10 for X, I get a positive. 10 minus two would be positive. 10 plus two would be positive. And, sorry, 10 plus 1, not 2. Now, 10 plus 2 would be positive. 10 minus 4 is positive, And all those positives would end up being positive. Okay, I do see that these are alternating. That is often the case, but it is not always. So don't bank on that always. All right, now what? Now we are going to look back at our inequality. Remember, we wanted to know where this was greater than or equal to zero. Well, what types of numbers are greater than zero? Positive numbers, right? So we already figured out what regions here are positive. It's from negative two to negative one. We include negative one because that's where it would be zero. From zero to two, including both zero and two, and numbers greater than four. Okay. You pick a number that fits in any of these regions, plug it in for X and it will make this statement true. You will end up with a number over here that is greater than or equal to zero. Isn't that cool? So this is your answer. This, this number line represents your answer, but your teacher probably wants it either written as an inequality or an interval notation would be my guess. So we're going to write an inequality first. We need something represented for each of these regions. So for this guy, x is greater than negative 2 and x is less than or equal to negative 1. Wouldn't you say that represents this? Greater than negative 2 
and less than or equal to one. This one is less than or equal to because the circle is colored in. Another way you could write that if you just wanted to write it with one X, we would have negative two is less than X is less than or equal to negative one. So that represents that guy right there. What about this one? This one would be X is greater than or equal to zero and X is less than or equal to two. Why don't you say that represents that guy? Another way to write that would be, we've got this guy or this guy, which we can also write as zero is less than or equal to X is less than or equal to two. All right, so we've got this guy represented, this guy represented, so it can be this or this, or X can also be greater than four. Look at that. I know that's kind of a long answer, but there you go. Okay, if your teacher wants it in interval notation, I would say you can pick a number from negative two to negative one. Negative two gets a parenthesis because it's not included. It's an open circle. Negative one gets a bracket because it is included. Then we do union, meaning this is together with. From here, we say you can also pick a number from zero to two. Zero and two are included, so they get brackets. Another union with, you can also pick a number from four, not including four, so it gets a parenthesis, all the way to what? Infinity. And infinity always gets a parenthesis. All right, so both of those, those are the same answer, just written in different formats, depending on what your teacher wants. All right? Okay, now's my favorite part, guys. You want to see why this all worked? Why did we set these equal to zero? And why did we do this sign analysis craziness? I want you to pretend for a moment that you are being asked to graph this. Don't freak out. Pretend you're being asked to graph y equals x cubed minus x squared minus 2x over x squared minus 2x minus 8. All right, we are going to graph this together, but I'm not going to go into a ton of detail because I do have a video I will link in the corner where I graph this exact equation. All right, but I'm going to do it quickly for you here. So if I were to graph this, I would figure out my vertical asymptotes by setting my denominator equal to zero. And that would help me figure out that I have vertical asymptotes at negative two and four. All right, there are my vertical asymptotes at four and negative two. Then by looking at my degrees, I would figure out that there's not a horizontal asymptote. There is a slant asymptote at y equals x plus one, which would look something like this. Okay, there's my slant asymptote. Then I would figure out my x-intercepts. And by figuring those out, I would find that they are at negative 1, 0, and 2. So negative 1, 0, and 2 are my x-intercepts. Then by applying what I know about functions and about asymptotes and things, I would figure out that this graph looks something like this. Do, 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 do. This is my graph humming music. All right. Like that. Okay, you're like, great, why do I care? Let me tell you why you care. We were originally being asked, where is this greater than or equal to zero? Well, this represented as a graph is this. So where is this graph greater than or equal to zero? Let's look. It is greater than or equal to zero, let's see if this matches up, from negative two to negative one. Look, guys, it can't actually be negative two because that's an asymptote. It won't cross that, but it can be negative one. 
okay? Then it's also greater than zero from zero to two. Look at that, zero to two. And then where else is it greater than zero? Not including four, but from four all the way to infinity, okay? Guys, is this amazing? So when we set all of these equal to zero, what we were actually doing was we were finding our x-intercepts and our asymptotes. These three were our x-intercepts, and these two were our vertical asymptotes. Oh my gosh, that's what we were doing. Then all of this sign analysis business we did was to figure out which way the graph was going in all of these different regions. See, from negative infinity to negative two, we were negative. From negative two to negative one, positive, okay? And so on. So do you see why that worked? We were really graphing it just in a simplified version. Isn't that so cool? If you don't think it's cool, that's okay, but I think it's so cool. I am still geeking out about it a little bit. Okay. I hope this helped. If you need some more example videos, I will link a playlist for you. Thanks.